Hey, Tim Schetz here again with C4D Training. We are going to continue on with the introduction to MoGraph. So this will be part three in a series. Previously, we went over the matrix object, the fracture object, and the instance object. So today we're going to go ahead and start with the text object. So similar to the regular text object, when we add the MoGraph text object, we get the word text, very original. And if we click here on the object tab, we see this, here's our text. And we also get the MoGraph text automatically extrudes the text for us. So we see here depth, and we can make it a little bit deeper if we want to. And then subdivision is how many subdivisions going back, so along this edge here. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that as one for now. And I'm going to go ahead and add some text in here. So this is a test of the emergency broadcast system. And notice I've typed that in there, but my text hasn't updated. So I have to click in the window. And then now there's my text. Go ahead and move this over. There we go. Now, the beauty of the MoGraph text object is with regular text, we would have basic coordinate and object, and then if we extruded, we have our caps. Well, then we have this thing here called all lines, words, and letters. And you can probably figure out what that does, but it enables us to affect, because here's an effects box, either all of it, so everything in this text, we can do per line, we can do per word, and we can do per letter. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with words. And if I go up here to my MoGraph menu and I select the, say, random effector, if I go back to my text object, by default, it automatically adds it to the letters section. So I want to go ahead and delete it from there because I don't want it in the letters. I want it in the words. And so I just grab it and drag it back in there. And now if I go to my random effector, and I just want my parameter here, and I'm going to not have it offset in the Y or the Z, and we'll just have it go in the X axis. And as you can see, it moves each of the words individually. So I could say come here to 20 frames, go ahead and set this to zero and keyframe that. Come back down here to zero and set this to zero as well and change this to say, I don't know, 5,000 and go ahead and keyframe it. And so now as I when I run this, my text comes flying in by word. And of course, I just never really like that kind of animation. So I'm on my text object, if I go ahead and add my delay effector, most likely it went ahead and added it to my letters again, which is not where I want it. So I'm going to go to my words and drag my delay effector in and select my delay effector and I'm going to go ahead and set this to spring and if I rewind this and I hit play my text kind of has a little bounce to it and so I can increase the bounce by increasing the strength here there's a little a little more bounce so I could do the same thing and on my text object I could go ahead and just delete these out of here. And if I wanted to, I could, on my lines, I could go ahead and drag my random effector in there. And then I could go ahead and drag my delay effector in there. And if I rewind this and I hit play, now they come in as full lines. And again, if I didn't like that, you know, go ahead and delete it. And let's just say that we're going to do it with letters instead. So I grab my random effector, drag that in there, grab my delay effector, because all of my 
options are set for my random effector and my delay effector. I have my animation set. Everything's ready to go. All I have to do is just drag them into the different sections. So go ahead and rewind this, play, and there go my letters bouncing in. All right, so next up in our list would be the tracer. And there is already a tutorial on this site showing how to use the tracer. So I'm not going to go over that again. I may do more tutorials on using the tracer in different ways in the future, but the basics of the tracer is covered in another tutorial. So check that out if you have a chance. So we're going to go ahead and move on to this blind mask. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file here. So we have something clean. I'm going to add this blind mask and nothing really happens and that's okay. So we need some splines in order to have this work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll pick, I don't know, an inside and rotate that puppy around. And then I'm going to go ahead and, I don't know, let's add a flower. Let's do something kind of weird. And I'm going to bring this guy down here. So now I've got my two splines kind of overlapping. I take the flower and the inside and I drop it into my spline mask. My spline mask has options. So here's the mode and right now it's set to A union B. So if I took my spline mask and I move it, those two pieces move as one. If I go ahead and I add an extrude nerb and throw that spline mask in there, those will now extrude as one object. And so I can get this kind of interesting shape that might otherwise be difficult to get. And some of the other options, so here I am on my spline mask mode, A union B, we can do A subtract B, so now that inside is taken off the top of the flower. I can also say B subtract A, which kind of, you know, makes a sort of interesting, you know, it looks like a space invader or something. And then we can do A intersect B, which will just be where they intersect, that will become an object. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it back to B subtract A. And now I'm going to show you something uh, interesting here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take my spline mask and move it out of my extrude nerve for now. And I'm going to take my flower and holding down control and dragging it, I'm going to drag another flower and I'm going to add another spline mask here and I'm going to throw the flower in there and then I'm going to throw my first spline mask in there as well. And so now I have spline mask and flower. I'm going to move this flower up and let's let's kind of move it around here. And in this spline mask I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say uh, we want A subtract B this time because A is the spline mask, B is the flower. If I move the flower up, then on my spline mask, I would want B subtract A. So now I have this kind of weird little shape here, and I can then take that, put it into my extrude nerb, and now I've got this kind of weird, wacky shape, which is kind of cool. It might be hard to model that, and this way was really, really easy and you know you could do splines that you create in Adobe Illustrator and bring them in you could do all kinds of complicated things bring them in and kind of combine them uh, using the spline mask we could also you know go really crazy and we could say take a cloner object throw our extrude nerb into the cloner object and I set this to radial and I can you know do something wacky and create this kind of weird weird shape here. We render that off. Kind of interesting. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new file now. And the next object under MoGraph when we come under spline mask is most spline. And most spline is new in MoGraph 2, so it's only available in 11.5. If you haven't upgraded, there are quite a few things in MoGraph 2 that are well worth the investment for the upgrade. So I'll go ahead and add the most spline to my to my scene and I'm just going to rotate my uh, view around here. When you first bring in most spline, if I go ahead and render this, nothing shows up. Most spline needs something to help it render. So one way we can do that 
is we can come down here to our materials and say file new hair material. So if you have the hair module and we can take the hair module and we can drop that onto most spline. And if I render this, you can see I have like one little hair there. It's actually more than one little hair. So if I grab my most spline and right now segments are set to one, I could increase that and really nothing seems to be happening until I change some angles and now you can see the different pieces and there's my there's my most blind with the hair on it and come back here to most blind so we have these different angles we can we can play with right we can have them come up and and then we have these objects down here the curve bend and twist and this is where the kind of the fun comes in look at that kind of cool and then we can move my camera around here so you can kind of see more what's going on. Zoom in here. There's that, those guys. And we can make them dance. La 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 la. Okay. And now if I go ahead and render that, I've got these pieces of hair kind of that I can make dance. And if I change the hair material, I could probably make them look more like uh, grass or some kind of a weed or something like that. So I'm going to show you the other way to uh, work with most blind. So I'm going to go ahead and come down here and select most blind and change my segment numbers here and change my angle so they spread out and I render this and I get nothing. So what I can do is add a little circle here and I'm going to scale that down because that's way too big. So let's maybe do it like that. And now I can add a sweep nerb. And if I take these two guys and I throw them in my sweep nerb, and now I render this, there are my sweep nerbs. And I can go to my most spline and change the, their length, make them longer, shorter. Increase the number of segments that we're going to use. Have them curl up. So notice how it starts here and it comes around and as it comes around it goes up. And now I can change the twist. Which is actually they're twisting lengthwise so it's really hard to see. You can kind of see there's a little bit of movement in there. We can have them curl up on each other and form a little plant-like structure or come down. Go ahead and render this. So if I go to my most spline and I go to my fields, I can actually come up here to my particle options so here I have destructor, rotation, turbulence, friction, attractor, etc. I can add turbulence and go to my most blind fields tab, drag my turbulence in there, and now notice how they kind of freaked out a little bit. And there's my turbulence making them go kind of crazy. So I can go to my turbulence here and maybe we could turn turbulence down. I don't know, maybe make it to like two. Let's see what happens now when we rewind and play. So, kind of turbulent. We could change the fall off so that, so that that turbulence kind of falls off over a distance. So if we rewind and play. So the turbulence is really mostly affecting it where the red box is and then it falls off and, or gets weaker as it comes out to this yellow box. And we can affect that here with the fall off being 50%. So we can make that smaller or larger. All right, so we've got turbulence in here. So now we could come in and we could go to our particles and we could say wind and my wind object, I really don't want it to be that strong. So again, I'm going to put this to about two and I'm going to go to my most spline and to my fields and I'm going to go ahead and add my wind. 
And so now, here's my wind in here, so I probably should move my wind. So here's my wind, and notice that I have this this little yellow arrow pointing here, not the not the blue arrow, but this little yellow one back here, and that indicates the direction of the wind. So now if I go ahead and rewind this and play, my fan will turn, and that and the turbulence will blow my most spline and kind of have it moving around and. We could also, we could add gravity to this. If I come up here to my particles again and I say gravity and go back to my most spline and drag gravity in, and I'm going to put gravity first. See how they all like drop down? It's because the dra gravity is pulling them down as if they were really heavy. And now if I rewind this and play it, they just kind of move and flow. So under the effectors, we can also add our MoGraph effectors. So I can say random effector. So if I go ahead and render this, it's all kinds of craziness there with the random effector my random effector currently is set to change its position the x y and z so we could probably take one of these off and make it a little more manageable we might be able to do like scale and if i did uniform scale and go ahead and render that That's kind of wacky. Or we could delete our random effector, go to our most blind, and we could add one of my favorite, like instant, you know, add water, here's something cool effectors, is the formula effector. And if we, let's check and make sure it went in. Yeah, there's our formula effector. I'm going to go ahead and delete our gravity, our wind, and our turbulence. And let's just see what the formula effector does for us here. So it adds kind of a, an organic, basically is working on like sine, cosine, tangent, you know, some sort of wave form. And it creates this sort of natural organic movement. So imagine this is some sort of Thing in the ocean and if I take my most spline and come up here and let's change this so that they're facing up move this down and now if I run this and, and play it these guys do this kind of undulating thing you know that you would see underwater with the moving So all kinds of possibilities with that it makes much more organic stuff now with this most blind. That's it for today. I'm Tim Schetz, C4D Training. Thanks for watching. Yeah.